No, I can't stop. Uh, <laughs> I can't stop watching the fucking. I was just about to say. Uh, do you know? You know the the dude I showed you who did the rap reviews. That I did. You yeah, yeah. The he was finish finish that finish that. He keeps fucking yelling that. I was about to start the video out by doing that. Finish that, man. Finish that. But I didn't do it. We're not gonna do it. Sorry. Mike, what the fuck? I was just like huffing and puffing to get a big breath. I'm leaving this whole thing in the video if I edit this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to Bunk Bed Breakdowns. Welcome back to Bunk Bed Breakdowns with me. I'm back. I'm Bike. That's Michael. That is Noah. I'm Nicholas. This is BDGE's own dynasty show. I have commandeered it. Noah is uh, is on vacation. I told them to take the week off and uh, behind the scenes, you know, had he actually accepted that deal, he would not be coming back to the company with a job. So <laughs> he passed the test. He is here with us tonight. He is on vacation. So the man is committed. The man is working hard. Mike is committed. He's shooting out fucking big dogs, dynasty ADP with all of our paid startup leagues. So today what we're going to be doing is diving into that ADP. And we're going to be going round by round. What Mike did was something really cool. He made these charts basically looking position by position, how many uh, players are getting drafted at each position in each round. So we're going to be looking at, you know, if there are nine running backs in round one going, that means there's value at other positions either in that round or the next round or whatever. So we're going to, we're going to dive a little bit into the analytics and talk about players that we would be targeting round by round based on what we're seeing in the ADPs. Fellers, how are we doing? Doing Finish great, that, man. Finish that. <laughs> I'm shoddy Wi-Fi, so if I pause for about 15 seconds, you know why. But as Nick said, big dogs got to eat. I can't take a week off because if I do, it's a slippery slope, and then I'll be out of here real quick. Yeah, you get fired when you're on here twice a week, let alone. <laughs> I know. Times Imagine when I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm doing good too, man. Um, it's actually my girlfriend's birthday tonight, so I'm about to be single after this video. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, so, look yeah. at all the commitment going around right now. Um, but yeah, so hopefully, you know, hopefully we get this pumped out, and then. Um, and then I move on to that. But, yo, we're here to bring you big facts only all day, every week. Noah's grinding, putting together the ADP data. I will be grinding like a monkey, putting it into Excel to produce the beautiful page that you see on our BDG page. Uh, we'll be shitting on mock drafts continuously to get people <laughs> big mad while we talk about our ADP as well. So you can count on that. And, uh, yeah, let's break it down, boys. Yeah. Um, before we get into the intro real quick, uh, the ADP data is up on the draft guide right now is literally live today. It's July 1st as you're watching this. So the season long draft guide went live. The dynasty ADP is in the draft guide. So big dogs, I also will personally be going live later today on YouTube around 1230, 1 PM Eastern time to kick off a little, uh, draft guide launch party as well as fucking drink some more tequila in about 12 hours this is beautiful tequila i'm in, i'm in a good mood so noah hit the fucking intro make sure you are subscribed if you're if you're watching on my channel nick or colano's channel make sure you're over on bunk bed breakdowns <laughs> You know, Nick kind of brushed on it briefly, but we kind of just went round by round BDG ADP to look at uh, where the where they were heavy RB, where they were heavy QB. And the reason why is because you can kind of look at these trends and instead of wasting your time on mock drafts, you can just look at these tables and, and see like really quickly how you can avoid those runs and get ahead of the runs and capture the value. So we're just going to go here and we'll show you the graphic on the screen as well, but I'll just read it out for our podcast listeners out there. And round one, BDG ADP, we got some smart ass big dogs because all we got is four QBs, seven running backs, and one wide receiver selected. It's obviously Michael Thomas. So you can see, I mean, it, it is running back heavy. Robust running back is definitely the flavor of the month. And it's it's just so interesting to see how that pivoted because you know, a bunch of these like uh, longevity sheep kept telling you to draft wide receivers because they last longer, but in mm -hmm. the reality, like people realize that they actually want to win leagues. And how do you win leagues? You get running backs. So um, you're seeing a lot of running backs go early. And I think, you know, for me, I usually hate reacting to runs. Uh, but I think there's enough running backs and quarterbacks going in the first round for you to make a good play to still go one of them while fading wide receiver. Because if everyone is going running back, you know there's going to be wide receiver value available later. So to break it down, I think, you know, you're going to have the top four, four of the top five QBs go in the first round. Right, so that's going to be your Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, 
uh, Kyler Murray and I think Dak Prescott. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Justin Herbert and Dak Prescott. So for me, I think I'm usually targeting running backs here. If you're in the top four, you better be targeting like CMC and uh, Saquon Barkley and Mahomes or Lamar Jackson. There's really not much to say there. But after that, you're looking at guys like Zeke Kamara. Uh, you got, you know, Dalvin Cook as well if you're a little bit more uh, risky. But I think those are really the targets you're going for. Um, if you're going for a wide receiver that early or even a tight end that early, you're probably going to be losing out. It's crazy to me that like eight months ago, people were taking D-Hop, Juju Smith-Schuster, Devontae Adams, like all inside the top five. And now you can get Devontae Adams in like the third round, which even then that's like a huge value. As Mike said, it's not great to react to runs. But when you have all those elite guys that have a longer shelf life, quote unquote, uh, like a CMC, like a Saquon Barkley, even like a Dalvin Cook who's looking for a new deal, you kind of have to react to a run at that point because there aren't really many, at least my opinion, there aren't many running backs that I would select uh, in the first three rounds or outside the first three rounds that I'd really feel comfortable being my RB1. Yeah, it, it's like you don't want to react to the runs, but the market is kind of setting itself. You kind of have no, um, you know, it's, it's, it's because you can't take the value at other positions and flip it for equal value at the running back position. It's not like you could take an elite wide receiver and flip them for an elite running back. So the market is so heavy on running backs that like, if you miss out on it, you're going to be sent back like double as much as you normally would be. So you have to hit the running backs early, which gives you good opportunity in the second round. And I think in the third round too, because these proven running backs are the ones getting taken early. And I think that's where you kind of get a gap for the rookie running backs in a sense, you know, depending on how early you really want to dive into, but these, these group of pass catchers, that are the elite versions of the guys going in the first round, but as wide receivers are now available to you in the mid to, to late second round. So the guys like Tyree Kill, you can get at, uh, what's he at right now, the 18 or 19 spot or something like that in our ADP? Around there, yeah. He yeah, so, is currally going at 19. Yeah, so Hill is like basically the, the Alvin Kamara version of the wide receiver position that you're getting at the late second round. And I understand that like this is very, this ADP is definitely heavily influenced by how people are looking at you know, obviously, you know, you can only look one year into the future when it comes to dynasty realistically, like how you plan for players for the most part. And a lot of the analysis that's redraft focus will filter into dynasty leagues. And that's what we're seeing. That's why we're seeing so many running backs go early on. But at the end of the day, like these guys are going to show up year in and year out. The target kills are going to be there. And I love the fact you can get a guy like Chris Godwin who's 23 years old, who's going to be an elite wide receiver for a long time. And you're getting him around later than where you're having to take these running backs so it seems like you kind of have to go with the market running back early second round though you're getting a lot of really good value at the wide receiver because the elite prospects are getting faded yeah for sure so just to touch on that second round real quick we got two quarterbacks going in the second round so that really rounds out what i call the elite six of quarterbacks which is the lamar jackson patrick mahomes uh kyler murray dak prescott deshaun watson and russ wilson so that's rounds out the top six and then you got another five running backs going um, and then four wide receivers. So that's kind of that elite tier, uh, rounding out the elite tier, one of the wide receivers. So I think in the second round, you know, what I'm looking for is if you're picking at the early part of the second round, that's where you can get a guy like Miles Sanders, Josh Jacobs, and one of the tier one rookie running backs. That's like Jonathan Taylor, CH. And if J.K. Dobbins is in there for you, that's fine too. He's not in there for me yet. But the basically the elite like round uh, the elite round of like the young young running back so that's like a good target so that's like the only place where i think you can really realistically open running back running back for good value but mm -hmm. but if you're picking early on you went like cmc and now you're coming back around to the second second part of it i would not recommend going running back there because that's kind of where you're reaching into that like that next tier of rookie or like a slightly older like less uh, more risky like uh, older running back like Derrick Henry or something like that so yeah. that's where like what Nick said really plays in that's where you can get guys like Hill Godwin Adams like I'm I, I know I said to fade wide receiver in the bible but when value is falling that far you just can't really ignore it anymore and then obviously in tight end premium Nick actually got open with the CMC uh, was it Saquon no the Barkley uh, Saquon Kittle, Kittle, Kittle yeah Saquon Kittle yeah exactly so beautiful. that's also another beautiful option because normally I would say Kittle's a first round value but given after studying all this ADP data I would say that Kittle has to go in the second round, but if you're getting him in the late second, that is straight cash, homie. Because no one, no one wants to be the guy who who takes the tight end first. No one wants to be that guy, yeah. and especially if you're playing in tight end premium, we have both tight end premium and non tight end premium ADP available in the guide. Um, but both, I mean, both of them, I think Kittle ends up being a value because he's just so far ahead of the pack when it comes to dynasty value. Like, yes, for redraft for one year, we're going to see 
not a, there's not going to be a gap between Kittle and Kelsey what the production is this year but I mean you're getting Kittle for four or five extra years on top of whatever Kelsey is giving you so um, in tight end premium he's putting up wide receiver one to two possibly three numbers for the next you know five years and you're getting that at the end of the second round so you're getting like Michael Thomas production-esque a round and a half later yeah, and this whole video is based around our tight end premium ADP, and we'll get into it later. But in the seventh round, you can get a guy like Zach Ertz, who I know Dallas Goddard is there, but, but when's the last time he hasn't been a top five tight end? Somebody's going to fact check me. He was like tight end six last year. but 2020. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> Either way, at that point, you're getting so much value. But Mike hit the nail on the head. It's great to start RB, RB, but if you are at the back half of the turn in the second round, it's obviously not ideal to reach on a guy like Austin Eckler there, where in the th- third round you could obviously get a jk dobbins or deandre swift so if if the value falls like a devonta adams like a tyreek hill who i don't personally value too much below michael thomas and you can get them a full round later just because mt is mt uh, that's definitely a huge steal i want to literally- touch on something real quick you, you you mentioned like not not being too worried about going back to back running backs like that's that will be a point of emphasis this year again going back to redraft like don't confuse the two league types redraft you're going to need two early running backs because the value dips off but in dynasty everyone drafts so different that you can fill your rb2 production for one year with someone that you drafted in the eighth or ninth round so don't be so hung up on reaching for getting your rb2 because you feel like you have to do that for redraft not the same for dynasty because even even guys we don't like like david johnson and Le'Veon bell is like you couldn't literally have them in the ninth or tenth round of dynasty drafts so um, you could you can get these values at wide receiver early in dynasty drafts and still get production at running back later while you know getting like a DeAndre Swift in the fourth round getting a Le'Veon Bell in the ninth or tenth round and fill out your running back group fine you know because you will be able to put together the pieces in the future as you look at the chart that I'm about to put up on the screen literally half of the picks through the first three rounds are running backs 18 of 36 picks are running backs and that's not to say that there will be none going forward. Like Nick said, you can get Le'Veon Bell's late, David Johnson's late, who we hate, but still they're going to give you production year one. I would just say if you leave rounds one through three without a running back, the chances of you being either competitive now or competitive in the future or both competitive now and in the future isn't really there because those guys like Le'Veon Bell and David Johnson aren't going to give you much one to two years down the road. Mm-hmm. And investing in like running backs are one of the third and fourth round this year aren't going to maybe give you much this year, but they might give it to you in the future. So if you are planning on being a win-now team with longevity, you kind of have to pick a running back within these first three rounds. Yeah, exactly. And just to break down the third round real quick, we got two quarterbacks, another six running backs, which is this is where this is That's why wild. I said like this is where you're reaching. A lot of people are reaching in these rounds for running backs. Um, and just to give you some names that are going off the board here in round three, we got guys like, uh, Austin Eckler, we got J.K. Dobbins, who's fine, but like you got DeAndre Swift, you got Aaron Jones, Kenyon Drake, guys who have lots of question marks, right? Even Cam Makers, who we love, but basically a lot of question marks for those guys. And, you know, in their place, you could be taking a guy like DJ Moore, who in my eyes has no question marks, uh, Juju Smith Schuster and AJ Brown, who are like young wide receivers to build around. But also, more importantly, you'll see if you look at it in combination with the next round, this is where the QB run really starts. So in the fourth round, you have four quarterbacks go one running back, six wide receivers, and one tight end. So, you know, one recommendation that I'm making here and one that I've been implementing throughout the offseason is I've been taking that beginning of the tier two of quarterbacks, which in my eyes is Carson Wentz, uh, in the third round. So then basically you grab your quarterback and then you can kind of take advantage a little bit of the value that falls to you in the next couple of rounds uh, from the wide receiver position. Uh, I don't know what you guys think about that, though. Let me ask you, like, if you know the – for the most part, I think a lot of leagues are going to play out where the quarterback run – starts in the fourth round you know we'll see some leagues where like the Joe Burrow and whatnot goes in the in the third but let's assume the quarterbacks start going off the board in the fourth but you're not picking to like the 408 or 409 are you going to use your third round pick on uh on a quarterback like would you use it on on Carson Wentz knowing that you're not going to get him on the way back at the 409 410 yeah like that's why I picked Carson Wentz because his ADP is actually like in the beginning of the fourth but I feel like you know usually Third, third, third to fourth to fifth round is where like heavy QB runs really start. Mm-hmm. And you can kick it off. Like you can just go ahead, pick Carson Wentz. That gets like the next guy to think about it. And then when you have the fourth round value, your fourth round pick might actually become like a mid fourth or an early fourth because a lot of guys in that middle section are going to start reaching on the quarterback. Like my philosophy is you either like kick off a run or you like try and pick up the tail end of the run. You don't want to be like in the middle because then you miss out on the value anyways. Um, so that's kind of how I think about it with Carson Wentz there. Oh, I, I yeah, just once think a guy like Carson Wentz goes off the board, people just start targeting the quarterback position very heavily. And a wide receiver that you were going to take in that position in the third round 
probably won't fall to you in the fourth, but I've, I've seen it happen where Mike Evans or even like a Mark Andrews yeah. in a tight end premium falls to you in the fourth round just because people are taking Jared Goff at the turn of the fourth round. Daniel Jones, there are people taking like Sam Darnold end of the fourth just because they're so nervous that through the next two rounds, I'm not going to be able to pick up a quarterback. I'll be having fucking nightmares about our, our big dogs startup <laughs> draft that we had like last month and the quarterback run that we had of like 10 in a row leading up to my <laughs> yeah. pick. I'm in another dynasty startup right now. Uh, it's like a it's pros versus Joe's on FFBC and it's, it's our normal settings, except it's full PPR, but tight end gets premium. And uh, we have plenty, I, I was at the 10 four and there were still guys like Jameis Winston and, and like some quarterbacks, you know, that you'd want to have in dynasty still. So I, I think it's going to be very different draft to draft, but yeah, I'm, I'm totally okay. Starting the, the quarterback run if need be. I do think, I do think that, um, do, do you think that if you're in a full PPR league, that it brings down the value of quarterbacks and super flex. I think a full PPR with the 1.5 tight end premium does because the dip off from whoever you have as quarterback two to that next flex play, especially if you wrap up two good tight ends, you have one as a starter, one as a super flex, the scoring is not going to be that far off. I don't think. I, th- I yeah, think what's the difference between like a Sam Darnold in like the fifth and a Robert Woods in the eighth points like per the, game? I, the, I don't know offhand, but it's probably premium, like one or two again. If it's 1.5, I'm thinking about the league that I'm in, right? It's, it's four point passing touchdown, super flex, right? So you're like, oh, quarterback, so good. Dude, but if it's, if it's, one, if it's full PPR, tight ends get 1.5, a five for 45 line is like fucking 12 points. You know what I mean? And that's like the equivalent of 200 passing yards and yeah. a touchdown and 20. It's just like, I don't, you know, I just, yeah, I don't here, know. I was just thinking about here, it. Here's what I'll say about that. Um, I think say it, Mike. tight end, like if you look at it on a season totals basis, I agree with you. But the, but the problem is like, if you're not playing best ball um, and you're playing like in season, you have to make like lineup decisions and playing yeah. quarterback matchups is by far the easiest thing to do. Like it's why in redraft, like I don't even draft quarterbacks. It's like, Every time I've streamed so far, I've streamed like a top top eight quarterback, like just like straight off the waiver wire. So I think in a, in a super flex, if you have like two or three Q quarterbacks, you can probably stream that position a little bit easier. So on a totals basis, uh, yes, I agree. But on a week to week basis, in terms of stability of the point scoring, tight ends is still like hella variable. So yeah, I, I was going to draft Hunter Henry, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, because you know not to play him ever. You don't, have to, <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. All right, let's yeah. move to uh, where are we at round five. Yeah. No, we're at uh, round four. So I just want to touch on this real quick. But right now, Mark Andrews' ADP and tight end premium is round four. He's and the I be- he say, might be the best value in the entire draft. I got to say, I'm fucking disappointed in the big dog community that you guys let him fall this far because this is ridiculous. I think Mark Andrews should go in the second round. We don't have the updated ADP yet, though. Once we're getting the updated ADP yeah. in like a, a week or so of when July kicks off for the month of June. So all the ADP we have now is from all the drafts in May. We'll have way more drafts, a bigger sample size for the month of June. And if Mark Andrews ain't yeah. up into the third round, we're going to have fucking problems, man. Yeah. Mike's so, coming for you. Yeah, I'm definitely coming for you. And then also Mike Very Evans, uh, you know, elite wide receiver. If he falls to the fourth, there's not much really to think about. You just take him because uh, he's going to be a stud, you know, uh, going with the opposite Chris Godwin with Tom Brady. And, yeah, I think that's it for the fourth round. That was a pretty, pretty simple one. And then in fifth round, we got four quarterbacks going – Two more running backs. You kind of see the running back position thin out here because people don't want to touch the old dudes. Uh, and then you got six wide receivers. So, again, just another back-to-back round of six, half 50% wide receivers drafted. Um, and in here, in the fifth round, we talked about this before in the last episode of me and Noah, Allen Robinson is just an auto pick for me at this point. So uh, It is absolutely ridiculous that he's fallen this far. Um, and then I would target other young upside wide receivers. And the reason why I say young upside wide receivers who may not produce for you right away is because you'll see later on, you'll get some of the value production for you. So like you kind of pair up that youth in this fifth round here uh, with uh, value in the later round. So you can get guys like Ridley, DJ Chark, uh, DK Metcalf, Sutton, like whatever your flavor of the month is, like there's tons of t- young talent here for you to pick from, but you got to get a Rob. So if a Rob's there, just fucking draft them. It's, it's really that easy. Calvin Ridley might be older than Allen Robinson, but, <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. Uh, and as Mike was saying, if you look at the chart again, there are 18 wide receivers from rounds four through six. Again, half of the picks and 29 of the 36 picks over the span are either wide receivers or quarterbacks. So if you think you're going to make it out of any of these rounds, passing up on quarterback, if you have zero quarterbacks after the sixth round, I'm like praying the rosary for you because you're going to end up with like, like a Drew Brees, Tom Brady duo, which in two years, you're going to be left with nothing. And although wide receivers are more plentiful, if you don't have a wide receiver one after the sixth round, you're kind of looking for like an Adam Thielen who's going to give you one to two years. I do like a Robert Woods, but like these guys with less longevity, 
as opposed to a guy in the fourth, fifth, or sixth, like a Calvin Ridley, like a DJ Chark, like a DK Metcalf, who probably have as safe of floors as those guys, but also more time to produce. Yeah, it's, it's literally just like flipped. If you look at the wide receivers, rounds four, five, six, there's six of them each. With running backs, rounds one, two, three, it was seven, five, six. So the same number going off running back wise, flipped with the wide receivers. And yeah, like you said, I mean, the the importance of getting those young wide receivers in that in those rounds. And it's, you know, it's not a great idea to try to wait and say, oh, I'll restock on youth later or I'll, I'll fill up that production. Like as, as we were saying with the running backs, it's not a great idea to do that with the wide receivers because their longevity is really, really long. And you're able to get some of these guys who are like Chark is 23 years old. Uh, you know, like some of these guys are very, very, very young. They're going to be in the league for like the next eight years. So to forego them, and just say like, oh, I'll get Adam Thielen who's like 31 years old or 30 years old or whatever. Production will be there, but you're also missing out on seven or eight years. Whereas the running back's lifespan is not anywhere near that long. So you're not taking that, you know, those years into account when you do it on the flip side. And yeah, it keeps you flexible so you can take a Thielen later or a Woods later or a Devontae exactly. Parker later. Because if you build around a Ridley Chark and DK Metcalf around this range, you have the young guys that can produce and continue to grow throughout their career. Or even like a Justin Jefferson and pair that with a Thielen. So when he starts to decline it's kind of a changing of the guard where you bring in the rookie once they start to hit their stride it's exactly yeah. what i did it, the league i was just talking about the pros versus shows i went uh i had godwin my second round pick i ended up going terry at the 510 dj chark at the 62 hollywood brown at the eight maybe and then Thielen in like the ninth or tenth and i was excited yeah. about that as a full ppr i was like Thielen is gonna be really good for the next year or two so um that was great because one of those young wide receivers will probably bust if not multiple of them or take long to get you know, hit that stride where I hopefully need them to be one day, but Thielen will kind of cover the gap for now. So that's what I like to do. Those rounds five, six, seven, eight is just like so much upside, so much youth and so much talent at the wide receiver position. Yeah. yeah you'll see. Uh, we'll save see. you the weight. Nicky chose Terry McLaurin. I would just trade him sooner rather than later. <laughs> no, wait for peak value after he wins, <laughs> wins fucking MVP this year. <laughs> yeah. You'll, you'll see how it rounds out. But like when you pick, because like early on, we say you could take like a Hill, Godwin, or even like a DJ Moore in the third round or whatever. Uh, you'll see how it rounds out because when you pick Ridley or Chark or DK here, you don't need them to be your wide receiver too. They'll actually end up being your wide receiver three this year. And then, you know, hopefully ascend to that wide receiver two, wide receiver one position over the next two or three years. But the next round here in round six, uh, this is where, you know, I would say, you know, basically you're kind of wrapping up the tail end of the quarterbacks you're just picking uh, Terry mclaurin here and yeah good cool good quarterback so three quarterbacks are going three three running backs are going another six wide receivers zero tight end selected um so i think this is where i call i call it like the value qb2s so you got like Tannehill, stafford and kirk who are probably three of my most targeted quarterbacks and i think that's a beautiful position to be in uh if we're a qb2 position if you've taken someone like a Carson Wentz uh, in the third round or even like a like a Goff or, or Baker or someone in the third round like to have these guys your QB2 is pretty comfortable and then as Nick said you could also go with someone like Terry McLaurin uh, or Jalen Rager for that you know slightly higher risk play uh, but I think you know if you waited on quarterback and you went for uh, I believe it's strategy two in the in the guide this is a perfect spot to pick up your QB2 because you're kind of closing up that QB run even though there's four more QBs going in the seventh round I'm, I promise you those are not quarterbacks you want to build your dynasty team around. So this is like wrapping up the the value uh, quarterback that gives you like a at least like a five-year runway. I would also say if you don't have your running back two to this point, this would be a decent point to try to target them because this is where like the veterans go or the guys who kind of have unknown situations. Like Kareem Hunt is going in the seventh, but I think as the hype starts to grow, he might slip into the sixth or Melvin Gordon or James Conner or Chris Carson. Sure, they might fall to the seventh, but I think if you are looking to win now and you want that second piece at a discount, this is around the point that you want to target them. If you do have them, it's really hard to pass up on a McLaurin or Rager or even like a Ryan Tannehill here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it's important also, like the guys that you named are, I think are much, much more valuable than, you know, waiting one or two more rounds and getting a Le'Veon Bell or a David Johnson. Like we did bring them up and say like they could fill your production, but that's, you don't really ever want to fall to the part where that is actually what your lineup is made out of. So like Chris Carson has tons of upside this year. Melvin Gordon, I think has a little bit more upside than people realize. And I think he has probably a little bit more longevity in the league than people realize. So I would definitely be looking six round is a good spot to look for like the cream hunts as well. Who's who has youth and could be good for a long time. Um, so it might be worth paying an extra round up to get like a, a better tiered running back as opposed to the veterans who will be out of the league in a year. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. I put Cream Hunt in the seven because that's where he's going. But if you want to grab for him in the six, that's totally cool. You want the or if you're animal, you want to take him in the third. Go right ahead. <laughs> yeah, you went at the five oh the five oh five. I think in the in the uh, pros or shows league, I'm in. It's ridiculous. Yeah, in the in the BBB. I don't even think that's a league. bad spot. Next year, he's gonna be like picked inside the top four or five rounds if he's a starting <laughs> running back. Yeah, yeah. In the in the BBB listener league, Noah and I would have taken Cream Hunt, but I think we traded back and got some future assets. But he went in the seventh round there. Uh, but if you do choose to go Cream Hunt in the sixth round over these quarterbacks or wide receivers, uh, this is where you can plug in another like wide receiver one for this year. This is where Adam Thielen is going, so I think he's a great value in the seventh round. And this is where like dynasty comes into play, right? Because you would not get Adam Thielen in the seventh round of a redraft league, but you can get him here in the seventh round. He, he's probably still good for another two to three years. Or if you've built out veterans earlier on, you could also grab a Justin Jefferson, who's kind of like the future of the Minnesota Vikings. So that's kind of where I see the value there. It's just like really those three players. I actually think there's like a very, it's a very dead zone in terms of ADP of like guys. I'm just like not that interested in touching. I, to be honest I with love you. when you get here and like the group chat I'm in for that, for that league. I like don't really know most of the guys in it, but they're all like, Oh, I'm about to make such a reach pick. Like it's not that far off from like DLF ADP. I'm like, dude, you guys are the fucking worst. Just like <laughs> ADP for dynasty for leagues like that is just so like everybody by the seventh or eighth round has such different strategies and their team structure is so fucking different. The yeah. ADP does not matter. Like go, yeah. go and get your guy. Like it, yeah. if you want to start going for rookies in the seventh or eighth round, go do it. It doesn't matter that fucking the ADP tells them that they're in the 10th or 11th round. Yeah, exactly. The other thing I want to say, it's kind of off topic, but Nick, I was looking at the redraft ADP this past weekend when I was doing the thing for the guide, and it's crazy to me the disparity. Like, I had never really – I haven't looked at redraft ADP in so long, and seeing Thielen as, like, a top 12 guy, and then in Dynasty seeing him, like, around wide receiver 30 to 35. Grabbing like, him everywhere. He Dynasty be a higher up because he's going to be in that top 12 range for the next two years. That's yeah. why. I know. That's why I'm like, dude, he's – like, I got him legit. I, he was my 10-4 pick in the in the fucking dynasty league i'm in right now it's full ppr i'm like it doesn't make fucking any sense <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean it's definitely a good value there and then eighth round like we said this is where i call the veteran sweet spot for wide receiver i mean take your pick you got robert woods you got Devontae parker you got tyler lockett you even got young guys like christian kirk there's just so much value at wide receiver here uh so i i mean hopefully by this point you're no longer drafting for need at quarterback and running back. So you've kind of already addressed that with your earlier picks. You can just really enjoy the value that follows here. Um, I mean, it's a beautiful spot, man. Like I love the eighth round right now, even more so than the seventh. Let me, let me ask you something. When it comes to rookie, uh, typically rookie wide receivers, like when do you, do you, do you look at them differently in a startup draft, depending on what you're Cause normally you're not taking a rookie wide receiver before like the sixth round. Most of them don't go that high. Do you start to consider them depending on how your team buildup is? Like, because obviously they're not going to contribute year one and you probably have to reach if you want to get your guys. Some of them fall a little bit later. But like, how do you look at rookie wide receivers? Because I personally, I end up, you know, being like, oh, I'll get them next round. And then I always miss out on the rookie wide receivers. And then I'm never disappointed about it. But I will be in like a year or two. So how do you guys look at rookie wide receivers and startups? Yeah, I mean, I look at it like similar to how we said, like you can get young guys in like the the fifth to sixth to seventh round. Like that's usually where I'll try and pick up like a Rager or like a Jefferson or, or like a CD Lamb because I know that I can backfill the production in 2020 with guys like Robert Woods, Devontae Parker, Lockett later. And like if those guys like actually do perform, trying to trying to buy them later on is actually pretty tough to do. Yeah, uh, but I, I don't want to go like too heavy, right? Like I'm not going to take like a, I'm not going to take like a Jalen Rager over like a Calvin Ridley or like someone that's already like a second year who's also young and also proven. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So I've left drafts with no rookie wide receivers and I'm okay with it. I think it's, I think it's fine too. Um, but if you do want one, you can, you know that you can backfill with some veteran stuff. So it's like, it's, I don't think it's a death sentence to kind of reach for a rookie wide receiver in those rounds. I always have a tough time taking them. Like I always kind of fall into not redraft mindset because I will still take a young guy that's more proven like a Cortland Sutton over a Rager. But I, I find it very hard when you're in that predicament, even if I have a Rager ahead of a Sutton, which I think they're very close for me in dynasty in terms of ranks. It's hard for me to pass on a guy who I know will produce for me this year and for the next like five to 10 years and try to go for somebody that might be like a Nelson Aguilar or like a Doral Green Beckham and do nothing for me. It's just like the unknown. It, it kind of scares me. I'd be lying if I said it didn't. So I, I typically fade them for known production. But if it's like a Thielen versus a Justin Jefferson in the seventh round and I do and I do have uh, a bit of a younger core, I would probably go Thielen there. If I have a bit of an older core, I'd probably go with the Justin Jefferson just to make sure I have more longevity on my team. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. I always have trouble actually like 
pressing the draft button on the rookie wide receivers. Like I like them all, but I never end up with them actually on my team. But I think I'm going to do that next. My next pick. I think I'm going fucking Lavisca Chenault no matter what. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> baby. Throw the video out there right now. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it's all about like uh, like I call it staggering the age cliffs. So like I don't like having a team with like a bunch of 28 year old wide receivers because like one year I'm just gonna get fucked. Yeah. So I usually stagger it out. So I have like a good mix of like young veteran and stuff. So they kind of like fall off in in stages instead of my team just totally falling off a cliff in one year. Um, but yeah, I mean it's it's like if you if you have a strategy of fading rookie wide receivers, honestly, probably a good one. Like if you're trying to contend now. Because yeah. chances are they they bust a lot more. Uh, so we're gonna cover the ninth round as the last last one here, and I think this is where you can pick like an upside tight end. Uh, so I listed guys like Higby, Fant, and Hawk. Um, so depending on your flavor, uh, like what you pick, like if you have if you pick someone earlier on, like a Waller, or you picked a Kittle, I think it's a great pickup to match them with. Like a one second, Mike. I'm pretty sure I saw Darren Waller going in the eighth round of these leagues. Yeah, yeah, Bruh. yeah. That's ridiculous. Bro, fuck that. Yeah. I missed him. Yeah. I got sniped by by one pick on him in this league. I wanted him so bad. And then uh, I ended up send, settling for, for Goddard in the ninth. Yeah, yeah. He's going to pick 88, 88, elite, elite number for uh, any receiver. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I mean, I think the people are really, 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 really getting held back by the crowded receiver room narrative, which is like just a really bad one um, because good players going to get targets. So I think Waller's going to eat. I love him. Um, but yeah, I think that rounds out the the draft for round ten. We just said pick whoever the fuck you want because honestly, like at this point, there's, there's uh, whoever really no the fuck you want. He means Mike Williams because that's who's <laughs> that's who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no such thing as reaching in the tenth round unless you're drafting like I don't know, fucking Lamichael P Ryan or some shit like that. But uh, yeah, other than that, I think you know this by the by the time the ninth round rolls around, you'll have a good sense for where your roster is. And if you don't, you I mean, you probably fucked up and you're probably gonna lose anyway. So you're beyond help. But you should have a good sense of where you are by this. You want to know who I? You want to know who I just took in the? I had two se- two tenth rounds. I took Thielen, and then I needed a running back. I had Miles Sanders, DeAndre Swift, and I needed a third running back. <laughs> I took Ronald Jones. <laughs> hey, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't mind. Dude, that I'm at starting all, to really like him this year. I don't mind that. I don't <laughs> mind that at all. Uh, I love him down there in the tenth round. I don't I feel know. like he's gonna be good. Yeah, I mean, I would rather. I'll say this: I would rather take a shot on Ronald Jones in the tenth than take a shot on Keyshawn Vaughn in the seventh. That's exactly how it went. I was like, there's no shot I would ever <laughs> fucking even think about doing that. So, Ron Jones if you is ever have Buck and Keyshawn Vaughn and Kareem Hunter there, please don't take Keyshawn Vaughn because he's currently yeah. going ahead of him in this ADP, oh. and that makes that makes zero sense. They're probably the same age, too, because Keyshawn Vaughn. We might have yeah. to manually switch that because I'm embarrassed. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> I, think, I think the next month's ADP, when it comes out, I think Vaughn's going to fall because I think even on yeah. Twitter, you're starting to see Vaughn's hype die down a little bit because all, the, all sure. the rookie hype fever is dying down. And I think that's the right thing. Uh, so yeah, please don't please don't reach on Keyshawn Vaughn. I he think. would be the player that like had they been in camp by now, all we needed was like one report of him looking like somewhat good, and his fucking ADP goes through. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, seeing, we're seeing a lot of that. That that actually yeah. is like a big thing though right now because we're yeah. not seeing any of that, you know. And there's usually yeah. so much fucking hype yeah. by this point that people are buying. Like Keyshawn Vaughn, one good report could put him into the fifth round yeah. of fucking startup drafts. You exactly. Know? No, Keyshawn Vaughn's looking like the next David Johnson. Boom, skyrocket two rounds. Bruce Aaron's like he's decent like everyone's like oh shit go buy yeah. him oh Bruce Aaron's like we're not cutting Keyshawn Vaughn like oh shit <laughs> yeah. Sean Vaughn I it. hate Twitter so much <laughs> uh but yeah look I, I think that kind of rounds it out here um we're gonna be looking to release uh you know the new months be the big dogs ADP as soon as I get around to putting that stuff into the digits uh I think that's that's all I want to cover for the for the startup here though all right yeah. we're yeah so that's all we got for today uh I hope you all enjoyed that I hope you guys can hear animal get i can't wait to see how this game ends and animal fucking blows the lead um uh, so if you guys enjoyed make sure you hit the button that looks just like that it's a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you're new uh, make sure you're also subscribed to the bunk bed breakdowns channel because they're putting out exclusive dynasty content that you're not going to get on my channel over there uh make sure you cop the draft guide big dogs draft guide.com it is fucking live today all the rookie dynasty shit's been live for a minute but season long goes live today that's all I got. I don't know. I'm done. I'm done. We're all done, right? We're all done.